dear friends, a very good morning to you all and a very warm welcome to you to Siloa. And I've got to say it's much warmer than I thought it would be. And there are far more people here than I expected. It's brilliant to see each and every one of you. I think I recognize you all behind uh, the masks. It really is tremendous to see each and every one of you. I just so wish that I could greet you uh, individually, um, but at the moment still not able to do that. But it's fantastic to be back, isn't it? Um, I'm sure you agree with me that the last uh, few months have dried, haven't they? And uh, we've missed fellowship with one another here uh, at Siloa. And I'll be absolutely honest with you, by now I'm online out. I'm fed up of it. Um, so it's great to be uh, back um, with you. So shall we begin with a word of prayer? Let's pray together. Lord, what a beautiful morning this is. The sun is shining. We feel the warmth of the sun. We see so many signs of new life around us at this beautiful um, time of year, this beautiful season of spring. But Lord, it's a beautiful morning for another reason. It's Good Friday. And Lord, we give thanks to you that we are so loved. So loved by you that you gave your only begotten Son to be our Saviour. And we think of those words that the Apostle said, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. Oh Lord, we give thanks to you and we ask that you would allow us to feel your presence, the influences of your spirit as we worship you here this morning. Bless us in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now do ring the service if you feel that you want to stand up, um, you feel a bit cold, uh, whatever, feel free. I want you to feel as comfortable as possible. And I think it would be good for us to stand um, as we listen. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to sing. We're not allowed to sing still. Let's hope that we'll be able to do that very soon. Uh, but let's stand, if you so wish, to listen to the beautiful hymn and can it be. Thank you, Marissa.
chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, further and followed me. with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility Consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And I'm sure we all want to give thanks to God for his holy and precious word to us this morning. sacred head now wounded 
With grief and shame weighed down Now scornfully surrounded With thorns that only crown How pale art thou with anguish With sore abuse and scorn Oh, how your face bears sorrow Which once was bright as morn Men mock and taunt and cheer thee Thou noble countenance Though mighty worlds shall fear thee And flee before thy glance Grim death with cruel rigor Hath robbed thee of thy life Thus thou hast lost thy vigor Thy strength in this sad strife You bled By our hands You bled by our hands You played By our hands You played My burdens You have carried My sin You have borne for it was my transgression Which brought this woe, this scorn I cast me down before thee Wrath my rightful lot But you have sweet mercy Redeemer by the cross You bled By our hands You bled By our hands You bled By our hands You bled You bled by our hands You bled by our hands You bled by our hands You bled For me For you For us For me For you For us For me For you for us. Oh, John, that was absolutely beautiful. Uh, uh, a hymn, of course, um, and that's.
familiar to us all uh, and the way that you sang it, your translation, if you like, or interpretation, I should say, of that hymn really brought us closer to the foot of the cross. Thank you ever so much, John. So reading the New Testament, of course, reminds us that many people were very involved, heavily involved uh, with Christ's crucifixion. And this morning, just for a few moments, I'd like to look at just three of those people. And first of all, the crucified criminal. The crucified criminal. We read of him, don't we, in Luke chapter 23, verses 39 to 43. And the criminal, this particular criminal, was being crucified because of his crime or crimes against the Roman state. And therefore, Roman justice demanded it. And he was perfectly uh, happy, if that's the right word, to acknowledge that we are getting, he said, what our sins or what our deeds deserve is what he said to the other thief or criminal who was being crucified. And we know that the cross symbolised God's rejection. That's what our deeds deserve. The cross symbolises that we are under God's curse. Cursed is he who hangs on the tree we read in the book of Deuteronomy. It's a symbol of God's wrath, of God's, of God's condemnation against sin. And that's what our deeds deserve. Um, in Ephesians chapter 2, we are told that we are by nature objects of wrath. And this criminal also realised that Jesus the one on the cross next to him had, and I quote, done nothing wrong. And that's quite a statement, isn't it? And that's quite a truth, isn't it? That he had done nothing wrong. Before God Almighty, he had lived a life of total obedience. As the reading pointed out a little earlier, he was obedient unto death even death on a cross, which is why we will celebrate on Sunday that we have a risen Christ. Death had no authority to keep him. Death had no hold over him because uh, he lived for us and died for us with total obedience to God. In his love, God, and as we read in Isaiah chapter 53, laid on him the iniquity of us all. I, I, I love these monitors, they're great, aren't they? It, it's been a good idea having these monitors. It means that we can look up when we sing, and they, they've been useful in so many other ways as well, too. Um, with the readings and so many other things. But if somebody, if Morrison was in charge of the monitors, if Morrison said uh, one morning, Heidi, I'm going to list all the sins you committed yesterday on the monitor for everybody to see. First of all, I'm sure everybody would be absolutely glued. Yes, I'm sure absolutely everybody would be glued. All the things that I thought about, that I shouldn't have thought about, all the things that I said that I shouldn't have said, all the things that I've done, just one day, well, I'm not sure for how long the service would last. And how about a lifetime of sins? Huh? How about a lifetime of sins? And what about your sins as well as mine? Can you imagine if they were listed on the monitors for all to see? Wouldn't we be horrified? Yes. Wouldn't we? 
Wouldn't we be absolutely horrified? And the thing is, of course, God does see every single one. Not a single one of them escapes God's attention. Not a single one. He is the omniscient God. Nothing escapes him. And doesn't that make you shudder? Because all of us will have to stand before him as our judge when Christ returns. And that makes me shudder when I think of that. But, don't you remember what that first hymn said, the final verse? No condemnation, now I dread. We need not fear. Why? Because God laid on him, laid on Jesus, the iniquity of us all. All those sins, every single one of them, from the least to the greatest, because before the most holy God, if we break even the smallest of them, the least of them, it's as if we have broken all of God's laws. But they've all been laid upon Jesus on the cross. A little later we'll listen and quietly in our hearts uh, sing, um, or, or listen and sing, Here is love, vast as the ocean. And there's a line in that hymn, of course, Heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed a guilty world in love. That's what happened on the cross. The crucified criminal was crucified with Jesus. And we are here this Good Friday morning because we too have been crucified with Christ. The old person has been crucified with Christ. Your iniquities, my iniquities, all of them have been laid upon him. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? To know that we are the objects of such amazing love. And another person who was very heavily involved with the crucifixion was Simon of Cyrene. What did he do? Well, he, for a little while, carried the cross of Jesus, didn't he? He carried the cross of Jesus from Cyrene, of course, whether he still lived there or not, we don't know. But he was seized and forced to carry the cross um, and some have argued that he became a Christian after this because Mark mentions his children, Alexander and Rufus, obviously known to the church. He carried the cross of Jesus. And as Christians, we are called to do the same, aren't we? To carry the cross of Jesus, who wants to be my disciple, Jesus said, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. That's the only way to follow Jesus. If you're willing to take up your cross and follow him. I was guilty as anybody of wanting the easy life sometimes. Don't we all feel like that? Don't we? In every aspect of life, uh, when that alarm bell goes off in the morning and, oh, it seems so warm in bed. Don't you just want to stay in there sometime and forget everything else? Don't you just want to have a duvet day every now and then? Uh, don't you? There's something good on the telly, and yes, there's a hundred and one, a million and one things uh, th uh, that need to be done, but oh, I just want to put the feet up, hide in the shed, <laughs> remember that one, yes, uh, uh, and just um, relax, and we can be like that in our Christian walk as well, we just want the easy life, 
no hassle, um, no burden, no stress. We just want the easy life, a uh, Christian walk that won't cost me anything. I'm not talking financially, uh, I'm talking about everything. A Christian walk that won't inconvenience me, that won't trouble me, that won't cause any pain. But Jesus did say, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. As Christians, we must be prepared to react differently. To forgive, for example, when it's painful to do so, to stand for God's truth when we know that it'll make us unpopular, when it doesn't go with the mood of the day. To carry the cross and be willing to suffer the consequences. A crucified criminal, crucified with Jesus, uh, Simon of Serene, he carried the cross of Jesus. But finally, dear friends, we have the Apostle Paul. And I know what you're thinking, I knew you've got this wrong. You need to read the Gospels again a bit more carefully, carefully I hear you say, because there is not a single mention of the Apostle Paul uh, in the Gospels. And you're right, we have to wait until the Book of Acts, the stoning of Stephen, before we come across the Apostle Paul. Yet, when you read his epistles, we see that Paul was very much involved in sharing the news about the cross of Jesus. He proclaimed the cross of Jesus. Indeed, he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I suppose what we have there is a hyperbole, a, a deliberate exaggeration. Of course, the Apostle Paul taught us so much about every aspect of Christ's life, didn't he? And ministry. But it's as if he's saying here, look, if you manage to forget everything that I've taught you, right? Whatever you do, don't forget what I taught you about the cross. Keep that firm or firmly in your memory. Don't forget the cross. I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. It was a foolish message to the Greeks and Romans. How could a crucified person be regarded as a saviour? It was an offensive message to the Jews. They were expecting a saviour to come with power and defeat the Romans. Were they really expected to abandon their religion to follow one who was crucified by the Romans they wanted to defeat? What? A crucified Messiah? It was blasphemy to them. Yet to Christians, whether Jews or Gentiles, it was the power of God. The message was the power of God. And why are we here today? Listen to the traffic outside, dear friends. The world is passing by, isn't it? Uh, it's carrying on, um, working, uh, playing, whatever, uh, uh, on this Good Friday. We are here not because we're better than them. We're not better than anyone. We should be more aware of our sinfulness than anyone. But we're here 
because of the power of the cross. Aren't we? We are here because we know that without the cross, without what happened on the cross, we would be lost. We would be without hope. It's changed our lives. It's forced us to come here this morning to give thanks, to worship. Our lives as Christians are by no means perfect. We have different views on many things, I'm sure. But that is one thing that draws us all as Christians together, the power of the cross, the power of God. So, dear friends, we need to invite people to come and listen to this message. It's the only hope of salvation. There is no other hope. There is no other way, despite what the world says, the emphasis on tolerance and so on and so forth. When it comes to salvation, it's, a, it's so exclusive. There is only one way. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Now Jesus was quite emphatic there, wasn't he? Wasn't he? Uh, and what about what we read in John chapter 3? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The Bible is absolutely emphatic about Jesus and faith in Jesus being the only way of salvation. And that's what we are all called to share. According to the gifts that God has given us, according to the opportunities that God presents us with. In our own way, indeed, we have to be very respectful, very humble when we do so. In one of Peter's epistles, I can't remember uh, which one, we read the verse, always be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have. But he also says, but do so with gentleness and respect. Not in an aggressive manner at all, but with gentleness and respect. How will people react? Well, some, of course, will think it's an embarrassing load of nonsense. What are you on about? This is the 21st century. Haven't you moved on from that? Go away, you embarrassing person. That's how some will react, or some will listen, I'm sure, politely, but quietly think, oh no, can this conversation please end us up, isn't it? Right? That's how some people will uh, react. Some people will be offended by it. It's strange how things um, don't seem to offend some people at all. They seem to be easygoing um, about all things uh, and all people, but when it comes to the message of the cross, it seems to offend them. It seems to be very offensive to them. However, some people, people like you and myself, people like you and me, even the most unexpected of people, people even like Saul of Tarsus, will experience it as the power of God. We leave that to God. 
I was not to reason why somebody once said, isn't it? I was but to do and die. We're not to try and work out how God is thinking. It's not us that has to decide whether God is working in somebody's life or not. That's God's business, isn't it? That's God's business. Our business is to be obedient to what Jesus said, go and preach the gospel to all people. Leave the rest to God. Once that seed is planted, only God knows whether it will succeed or not. But we have been given the promise in Isaiah chapter 55 that it won't return to him empty. It will fulfil the purpose that he has set out for it. So may God bless each and every one of us over this Easter weekend. We're back here in Sinawang, if you so wish, um, at 11, not half past 10, uh, 11 o'clock on, on Sunday. It's been marvellous to see each and every one of you. I honestly didn't expect to see so many in Sinawang this morning, and it's been a real, real joy to see you, each and every one of you. I want to mention names, but once you start that, um, where do you stop, isn't it? So it's just take my word for it. It's absolutely wonderful to see each and every one of you. Let's pray. And therefore, Lord, we thank you that Jesus for us was crucified, and that we have been crucified with Christ. Thank you that all our iniquities have been laid upon him, every single one of them. Thank you that Jesus said, it is finished, Gorfenuid, teletestai, once for all. The work is done, completed, no stone left unturned. And thank you that the salvation we have isn't partial, but it is a full and free salvation. But Lord, give us strength to carry the cross. Give us strength, give us grace to deny ourselves. It's so easy to talk about such things, but help us to do such things. Help us to do the things that you would want us to do and not do the things that you don't want us to do. And thank you that we have wonderful names to share. Yes, we realise, no, we don't really, we don't realise how much he suffered on that cross. We do not know, we cannot tell what pains he had to bear. How can we know not? But all of the pain he did suffer, the fact that he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It was for us and for our salvation. And for God, God so loved the world, help us, Lord, to tell the world, but beginning in our Jerusalem, beginning in our community, beginning in our family and our circle of friends. Help us, please, through your Spirit, enable us through your Spirit to always be ready to give a reason for the hope that we have. But help us to do so, not arrogantly, Lord, not self-righteously, but with gentleness and respect. Help us to remember always that it is through grace we are what we are. And therefore, Lord, 
we give thanks to you that of all things this needs to be remembered most of all that while we were still sinners Christ Jesus died for us here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance Christ Jesus came to save sinners of whom I am the worst thank you please be with those that are dear to us this morning there are those that would love to be here Lord but ill health and other circumstances have prevented them from being here be with them bless them let them be aware of your loving presence with them and thank you that even those that we won't see again this side of eternity thank you for the sure and certain hope that we have because of the cross we shall indeed meet again where all will be well and therefore dear friends very quietly but we're certainly allowed to do so let us unite in the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen so shall we stand uh, and listen and in our hearts sing along to the beautiful hymn here is love vast as the ocean
you can see the windows are open and during um, uh, the second verse, I believe a lady, uh, I'm sure she was a lady, put her ear to the gap and listened to at least part of that verse. But let's just hope and pray that what she heard uh, will indeed have a profound uh, effect on her life. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.